It's working fine. Is it working? Is it on you here? It's, it's okay. So if there's anybody who wants to take some questions, that's a heck of a does show. That, does everybody it's got feel? a lot of implications, and I thank you very much for everybody helping make it possible, particularly Rosa and Chris, who, who did the streaming, and I'm glad we did. But maybe some people want to make some comments. It's very... Does it's everybody feel show. liberated? <laughs> yeah. Partially. Now, here's a question. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, the problem with idealism is in its definition itself. Trying to make something perfect. So in, in that, in a resource-based economy, to do away with modernism, it does not offer any solution. Like well, he did, he did offer solutions. Um, the the uh, next movie that we're going to see, not today, has basically the solutions. I wanted to show the first part. Oh, okay. All right, today. Uh, at another time, we're going to show another movie which is not two hours, but, a, uh, but an hour and 37 minutes. And it really has the solutions. And it talks about uh, what the Zeitgeist Movement is doing. Now, um, you know, I, I, I'm not here to get you involved in an organization. What I'm, what I'm here to do is open your mind to understand that what we're doing right now is leading to collapse. And it has to be replaced. Otherwise, we will die as a species. I mean, I can't make it more plain and simple than that, but what we're doing right now does not work anymore. It may have worked at, at one time while we were in, in, in a, you know, I guess a primitive state as human beings, and this exploitive uh, mentality has reached an end. It just, it, it can't work anymore. Uh, the solution is going to be in all of us getting together and pooling our resources. Um, you said that you have a database uh, from the UN. Did you want to talk about the database that you have now about, about uh, resources? We've got to move the camera. Put the camera on there. Frank, you work that one, I have to move this. Put on lights. If people unless see lights, you can put on lights and find the switches. Very brief. Bring up the light, everybody. You just pointed at her, right? Can you see, dear? Can you see? Is it going on her now? Yeah. Yes. Turn on the lights, John. I turned them all up over well, here. Well, do it over the others. Oh, Come here's her. A couple of very brief comment. Okay. I think the seeds of wonderful, wonderful things are we spend a lot of time looking at the problem, which is the way you keep imprinting people to stay in the prison. In the prison. There was one a line in there that came from the judge where he said in the court case about the bankers, he said, only God can create out of nothing. Oh, right. Which is a lie. Because we all have that capability. Right. When you look at what they were talking about, about we are made of the atoms and molecules and stars and so on. So it is about the shift in consciousness. I believe that the earth cleansing, which has been prophesied for millennia that we're engaged in now, is just going to accelerate. So I don't think we're going to have a stepping stone change. And it is about awakening to the power of the light that we all are, and the power of collaboration and creation that we have among us. So I don't know how it's going to work. I know that the conversations that have been going on, the conversations with Harold and the banner he's been carrying, and the things that you're all producing that are producers and so on, the key is showing people the pictures and the images and the feedback loops and the music relationships with each other that can create a transformation that's already happening cosmologically in terms of our souls doing what we're doing. It's not just a technological creation, it's a spiritual evolution. Or really, these times are about putting that together. Media makers have a key to be able to 
show possibilities and bridges to billions of people, millions of people, tens of thousands of people. And that caused the shift to happen. But it was also happening because of cosmological magnetic shifts that were happening. So I have a feeling that the next movie you want to show us has more of that embedded in it. All right, it's the other it's the other part of the uh Zeitgeist movement. It's actually it's the it's the orientation for the Zeitgeist movement, and they they offer some solutions. Now there are well, some. One, so I just uh, there are some people here from the uh, New York chapter of the Zeitgeist uh, movement, and I'm wondering if let me just mention because yeah, you asked about coming. the database. There's uh, there's a, a website called www.onegeology.org www.onegeology.org, and it's a companion site, which is the beginning of aggregating into a transparent base geological surveys using remote sensing devices of the commodities that we have on the planet. The core resources are air, water, soil. Without those things, humans do not survive. <coughs> So in other words, it's not done for profit, it's done for... Uh, it's a resource, a true resource-based resource economy. That's great. Credits, I mean, what's the bridge between the money system as we know it? It's just a shell game, a con game. Well, it is a shell game. Yeah, it's so interesting. So, obviously, this whole podcast vision is tracking on the universal signal of oneness and the technologies that are attached to that bucky polar. Thank you. Thank you. Now there, there are a couple of people here from the uh, New York chapter of the Zeitgeist movement. Does anybody want to? Do you want to say something? Oh, let's first introduce ourselves. Because um, oh, we, 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 we're uh, streaming, brother. We're streaming it. Oh, okay. And I can't see. Anybody? I know you can't see. Them. Well, you're the creator oh, of the. Uh, oh, you, oh, you made the website for the New um, York chapter. Oh, you, you made the. You're from New York. There you go. Welcome. Hey, congratulations. Hey. No, he's not the there. Just the no, website. I know. You're advancing it. Good. Okay, definitely. Um, but, uh, well, you put the stream on you here. Can you see the man? Uh, a little bit to the left. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Hold it. Yeah. Okay, go. All right, uh, the name is Diego. Uh, I for, for the longest time, I've, I've looked into all of this, starting with 9-11 and then going. I became very spiritual because I was looking into a lot of these uh, alternative uh, way of thinking. And then I ran into Zeitgeist, and then that really caught my attention. And I, the whole time, I always criticized the system, but I never had an alternative. I could never, I could always, I could always complain about politics and about how um, corrupt uh, corporations are, but I could never do anything about it. So when the <coughs> when the opportunity came to, uh, you know, start a chapter, you know, I do, I do websites for a living, so that was something that I could do, uh, you know, on my free time, and so. You know, I felt that that was a way that I can contribute to the movement. Um, so we started the Zeitgeist uh, New York chapter, and uh, you know that's picking up speed. And Is it Zeitgeist that, Movement or ZeitgeistMovie.com? Um, ZeitgeistMovie.com is where you, you have the information about the movies, but Zeitge the ZeitgeistMovement.com is where you can access all the information about the movement and all the other chapters also. And there are also the other films on there. So you download even. Uh, I downloaded the other the other one about the, the guide. The, uh, the activist guide? Yep. The activist guide, uh, which is like an hour and 37 minutes. Yeah, it's recommended that you show that after, you know. Right, which I plan to show that one at, at another time. But, um, yeah. you know, I wanted, to get, I wanted to get people to understand that, that we... That uh, I, the problem that 
we've had all along is been actually unavoidable that it's going to get worse. And I think we're I think we're at a point where we're about everything is collapsing. It's collapsing. So when, when I mean I didn't want to, I didn't want to use that term collapsing <laughs> because it, it sounds like it's a structure, but it's not, we don't have a structure. We have a, a, a fiat system that is destined to collapse because it is a house of cards. Yeah, yeah. It's just a numbers game. It's, it's a numbers it's game. Just it's a house a, of cards. Yeah, I mean, well, my, my name is Vincent. Um, I I mean, I always grew up with the uh, notion that what, what, what's money? Why does it run everyone's lives? And why? I always had that question. I, it's, it's never, you know, you can't live off of, well, I mean, right now we're trained and we're taught to live off of money. And I just never understood that. And just um, I, out of after like I think I started working uh, two two thousand and five. I started paying attention to like the economy and just looking at financial news and it's like, hey, you know, there 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 are indicators and there are people talking about hey the economy is gonna go down. I'm thinking, hey, wait a minute, what's 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 with the economy going down? That the economy is the fabric of society, and if the economy goes down, so does the fabric of society with it. And it's it's money that really just connects like everyone. I, everyone has money issues, um, and yeah, I just never understood that. So funny. after yeah, uh, it's after, funny that you mentioned that you started thinking about money and what, what, how is money worth anything when it's just paper. I remember thinking as a kid, now you just just had a memory burst. And uh, I remember thinking as a kid, I looked at a piece of paper, especially I lived in Brazil, and we just had a new um, new redesign of the currency. It was like plastic. It was very durable. It was quite interesting. It was see-through. Me as a little kid, I was like, wow, this is cool color, see-through. The material was, it was pretty cool. So, but, I, but I always uh, ask the question, like, how is this piece of plastic worth like, you know, solid material objects that, you know, resource, in other words. And I, I, I never really understood that, you know. And um, like you were saying, money is the number one controller. No, mm -hmm. no, money, I mean, I, I always ask it people. It creates slavery. Yeah, it creates slavery. It creates not only slavery, but so much other problems. I mean, you, I, I talked to so many um I, I'm in the real estate business, you know, doing websites for real estate, and right now it's not the prettiest, uh, they're not in the prettiest situation, but a lot of the people that would get is like, you know, foreclosed property, uh, destroyed marriages, I have to, we, have, we don't have that many uh, listings, but two of them are, you know, from, actually might might even be three, but three of them are from, you know, breakups, you know. So, and that, that always has to do with money, because that house is always being going to, going to be foreclosed, because no one wants to pay for it. So, it, and I talk to a lot of people who have, uh, you know, issues. Like, I was working the other day, and uh, this guy that I work with was having, it was in a fight with his wife, because he bought a quad to, to plow his driveway and, you know, other neighbors. And he got into a fight because his wife didn't like the fact that he was spending money. She was always trying to save money. And I'm like, if you eliminate that, if you give them their basic needs, they wouldn't have that problem, you know? So uh, essentially what, what the resource-based economy wants to do is give everyone's basic needs so they don't have to worry about keeping the le electric on and, you know, paying their mortgage to keep their house. And, you know, once you get, and not to mention, give people a free education so they can, you know, contribute to society better than they can without being educated. So that's essentially, um, so you had the question about the, you know, how, what, it didn't really solve problems. Which you'll, you're later going to find out with the activist uh, guy, hopefully, is that a lot of the problems in society today, and th that was kind of demonstrated uh, with this film, with, a lot of the problems is technical. You, you know, just like roads, you know, I mean, instead of putting up a sign, drive slow, you know, you make a car, so you make a car, uh, be hooked up to GPS so it knows one, when it's on that road, you can only go 30. And, you know, you can press on the gas as much as you want, it's not going to go past 30. You know, you avoid all these problems, all these deaths, unnecessary deaths, by creating technology to help improve that. And 
you know, if you eliminate money, you can we can create any type of technology. We can have electric cars, but first we need electric, you know, uh, a means to generate clean electricity. Period. You know, once we have that, we can have everything. Everything runs on electricity. So once we have that, we can have electric cars. Or you know, you can have whatever. You know, <laughs> once you have electricity, because everything factories, everything will run on electricity. Not everything. But no. there, there's, you can run things on all kinds of things. And yeah, kinds of different methods. You can run things on water, you can run things on magnetism. Gas, on magnetism or whatever. Yeah, 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 I've seen. Uh, Oil is, you know, actually the least efficient of yeah. the. Yeah, pretty yeah. much. To create technology, you need capital. To create capital, you come back to needing money. The existing monetary system exists because it really works. Fraud is, is, is maybe. You bring up I, a good point. Okay, well, um, my name is Anton, I'm part of the New York chapter also. Uh, I actually just recently became, like this week, part of the chapter, a couple of days ago. Um, yeah, but the reason, the reason we have money is because it was a necessity for, for the longest time. It still is a necessity, actually. It's, uh, money, in any form, actually doesn't have any value in its own. It's just a promise to do something. And, you know, the reason uh, we need it is because in order for, to, pe for, to bring people together to do anything, you know, they needed to be motivated by something. So the promise of wealth or eventuality brings them to do any kind of project. Uh, and again, that was because of scarcity. However, in a, the only way you can basically annihilate money is to annihilate scarcity. Uh, and that would take Technology, obviously, technology, and abundance. it's not going to happen overnight. Can I ask you a, 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 a hypothetical question? Mm -hmm. What if the economy completely electric company turned off the electricity? Yeah. Isn't, isn't that a funny question? Because if money is eliminated, out of, if no one can buy anything today, you will be able to walk inside of a supermarket and look at all the food, and everyone will be able to walk <coughs> in around stores and see all the things that you're not going to be able to afford because there's no money. They're still there. All the resources are still there, but we don't have the money. Isn't, that should be like the, the big wake-up call for everyone. <laughs> Well, may I speak? Yeah, um, hi, I'm Frank Craven. I'd like to introduce, uh, I'd like to introduce uh, my friend Michelle Donnells here because out of her own home, she created Brooklyn Greenbacks, and she set in motion a community trade uh, a script like they did in Ithaca dollars and just decided to make a community-based money that actually was backed by a bank and the community signed on in the newspapers, and it got very popular, right? But she had to do it out of herself, or it got overwhelming. Why don't you talk a bit Basically, about that? Basically, the local currency that we created was the value is in the community, the individuals in the community, and the trust that we have in each other. So when you talk about money, it, the U.S. dollar is basically backed by debt. And we believe that, paper, we believe in that paper which is backed by debt. But communities like Ithaca, New York, are have thriving local economies because people like Paul Glover created Ithaca Hours, and people are using and exchanging goods and services because they believe in each other. And that's what we have to do. We have to start believing in each other rather than in the paper. Well, yeah, you use that combined. Imagine if you had, if you, if, if your community could Let's say you somehow there were enough individuals in your community that were well educated in um, whatever technology is required to build a geothermal factory. And you built a geothermal factory, you had unlimited power. So you see how technology will improve that way of life. But we, we, it always, it, the question was raised to Jacques Fresco on the, the last appearances they had, he had on TV on The Edge. It was some, some, some TV show in uh, England. He, w he wasn't able to answer it. And the question was, how do you go, go from monetary system, like you said, we're going to need money in order to start this, because we're, we're living in this system. You know, I mean, there's uh, you know, alternatives, but at the same time, you're not going to be able, unfortunately, you're not going to be able to rise, raise enough money to get the resources to build a factory in order to you know, generate electricity and expand. You, it's going to be kind of restricted to the resources you have. You know, so Jacques wasn't able to answer this, but it, it's it's simple. 
And first, we need to get everyone behind us. That's why the main goal of the Zeitgeist Movement is to inform people, because once they know about an alternative, once they know they can generate an abundance of electricity, and I, I keep saying electricity because that's really the, the driving force for everything else. Uh, so what, once we get everyone behind it, we can then, if everyone in the military, if everyone, every engineer, everyone knew about this, they can literally say no, and, and they can literally start designing homes that are, are easy to build, like the Jacques Fresco trend home. They can design all these uh, structures to um, create an abundance for everyone, and they can literally say no to money. Do you but, know Michael Reynolds, the no. Earth Ships in New Mexico? This guy by the name of Michael Reynolds created 100% fully sustainable housing using tires, rammed earth. They're solar powered. They collect water. They he, you um, oh, grow your own food in them, um, and it's totally off the grid. And this is happening. We can now. do this today, like at a Reynolds global is, level. He, when he first started doing it, they fought him. But he's an architect, and he, he went through all the processes, and now it's legal to do this. And he's he has a movement where he's working so that it's legal in all the different. What's states. the website for him? Or do you know where? Just do a Google search on Michael Reynolds. Okay. And the name of the housing is called Earthships. Earthships. Called Earthships. Okay. There was actually right. Meanwhile, over half the world's population lives in the biggest cities, like New York, Beijing, Tokyo, Los Angeles. So you've got people living in these stacked up things, they don't know how to grow their own food, they don't know how to deal with their own waste, and so on. So it's a real mega engineering transition, Afro and we're dealing with earth changes. Afro so well, it's Afro a radical new level of thinking that needs to come into the Zeitgeist movement. And that will only come about with uh, in, an informed population. After the poll, I wonder if we could ask uh, Chris, if you mind. I don't know if you've seen this. Chris is a major film developer. The latest, well, what's the title of the thing you did? Uh, City 21. City 21, a major documentary on the urban environments emerging and the design and questions of that. First of all, Chris, if you don't mind, what do you think of the film if you've not seen it? And then secondly, how does it relate to what she brought up and the urban thing when you're dealing with whole mass societies? rather than individuals doing things out in the countryside. Well, I'm glad you asked. Uh, subtitle of City 21 is Multiple Perspectives on Urban Futures. And I think we do need multiple perspectives. And the Venus Project is another perspective. I do have some issues with it. Jock was clearly influenced by Buckminster Fuller. Amen. And uh, has put it into his own words. Um, but I, I'm seeing a little bit of this <coughs> idea of us versus them, that the existing system has to collapse. I don't think that's healthy. I think you can create a parallel network or a parallel world that uh, shows a better way, and people will move towards that. The forces of the status quo are very strong. They're not going to just collapse. And the idea that everybody is going to be behind this I don't think that's possible either. That's naive. We live in a multiple uh, universe with multiple cultures. So build a network, but don't think everybody's going to get behind it. That's impossible. On oh, yeah, that? yeah, it's, yeah. yeah. So I think that ideal is interesting to state, but get, get real about it. Oh, yeah. Well, we, I don't want to generalize it, but... Oh, yeah. I'm not saying... Let me just fit in. Yeah, okay. go ahead, go ahead. Uh, it's money the is, major film you should take cap on to. Let's uh, so, the out. So money is an invention of humans, and it's a tool. Uh, it's here because we do get things done with it. Uh, I think systems like uh, Brooklyn dollars, Ithaca dollars, are examples of where you create a parallel universe with money, and that's probably more healthy than to think money system is going to collapse, and therefore this resource system is going to come into place. I don't think that's the way it will play out, mm -hmm. and I don't think that's a desirable way for it to play out. Uh, the image of the future helps to create the future, so which part of the ideas of City 21. So we don't want to have images of collapse and the end of the world in our head, right. and to think out of that we're going to create something better. How about evolutionary type thinking, um, rather than revolutionary, which always leads to violence and 
short-term thinking. So but that's how the government policy. manipulates us, and they create wars. They they love war. They live off war. They have to justify their budget. In 2010, there's going to be 704 billion dollars to the Department of Defense. And you know, as John Lennon said, war is over. It's against every cell of survival. We all know war is ridiculous, and it's a construct by the Pentagon to keep their economy and their, their BS alive. Well, I mean, I agree with you there, but uh, we have a new government in place, and uh, perhaps we're a little more enlightened about that. But that's a, a whole other issue nope. about war. We're talking about the Venus Project. I think he does have some good designs, and there's some merit here. So that's my summer. There's something here. But don't get into an either-or mentality, like he called the people on Wall Street terrorists. That's either or. That, that, that's not appropriate. They're human beings. They're in a system. They're playing their game. So maybe an ecology of gamesmanship is a more healthy understanding of this. One other person. So great new what games. City 21, just city and then 21. C-I-T-Y? Yeah, see, city21.info is the website. Yeah. Uh, Joseph, uh, Joseph and David, behind you, uh, uh, Jimmy, and the camera, had his hand up a minute. He is a um, philosopher and was the representative of no one less than Martin Buber here in the United States over his long career, and he's a humanist. You had your hand up, Joe. Why don't you add your thoughts? As I was sitting here, I felt bombarded by snippets of truth. <laughs> and big chunks of reality. But when it all comes down to the nitty gritty, it was a frontal attack on the capitalist system. Mm. Because what we are experiencing here is nothing else than a corporate dictatorship Bertrand Russell called it a pretentious democracy. Now the question is this, and I discussed it once with Noam Chomsky, and he disagreed with me. Although deep down, I think we are on the same level of political thinking. I said, we are dealing with an irrational situation. The economic system, the political system, the uh, what they call spiritual system in quotation marks, see, is irrational. And you cannot fight irrationality with rationality. You cannot talk to insane people reasonably and expect that they will suddenly change. <laughs> <laughs> well said. <laughs> well, you know, this is just nothing what I'm saying right now. But what we need, just, just in conclusion, what we need is a powerful movement that would affect the guts of the people not just the minds. It has to go deeper than that. Because what the human being, human being consists of is reason, feeling, and intuition. Intuition is very important because that touches on all these, uh, you know, supra-rational elements. And if a movement that will refuse to go with its head against the locomotive will really penetrate to the depth of the reasons why we have such a horrible situation and which can relate to people like Hitler and Cheney and the rest of those predators and vultures. If we can relate to them as human beings and reach them, I think something can be done. But nothing is being done in that direction because it is so easy to say, here is an evil, let's fight it or let's boycott it. Let's 
be pacifists, let's get out against militarism, let's be socialists, let's be humanists, and so that's very easy to but to do something is not so easy. And that would be a completely different subject, so I can't talk about it. Yeah. Can I make I'd, I'd like comment? Yeah, okay. Um, um, I want to I want to also let you know that uh, Chris, who's a major filmmaker, you should be in touch with his work. He did a film earlier called Ecological Design. Is that the name of it? Yeah. Yeah, that was a major study, a real serious study of the personage of Buckminster Fuller, who was a comprehensive thinker. Mr. Fresco reminds me of him in a certain kind of way. But Bucky, if you will, the one premise that they're making in the film is we had uh, that we create scarcity. Bucky Fuller, otherwise, he took the measure of everything with the design and so forth, and it, that for 200,000 years as a species we've been on the planet, and in terms of the technological extension of consciousness to create a different environment, we lived for the overwhelming time in a condition um, epistemologically, or, uh, or, 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 or a reality of scarcity. Scarcity was the reality on the Serengeti Plain. Scarcity was the reality within medieval Europe. It was the scarcity in Dickensian times. And he held that we only crossed the line when we got a balance from ecologically augmented capability. We didn't, we lived all of our, our, our time on the planet in scarcity. That was the reality. We crossed the line where there were more haves and have-nots in terms of our capability only around the year 1970. So we've only been living in a non-scarcity world in terms of our technological capability that involved for a couple decades. Okay? So that's one point. It hasn't always been that way. It's not created. And then also, if you're in a condition of non-scarcity as a new ontologic reality, one of the advantages it is, is that you're able to get a situation where there are no enemies. You can begin to have a thing. And if you're going to have an alternative, you're going to have to have a different alternative economic system, the way capital is to be formed and the capital and the technology is to be implemented, and you're going to have to have an alternative way of distributing buying power and income to the people so that they can clear the market. You're going to have to have an economic system that is one that is going to spread ownership of the technology to the people as an income distribution mechanism. And we don't have that. So you need a new economic theory beyond what we're being offered now. That's all. But it's one that will include everybody, including those responsible for the outdated institution, which will be subsumed. But you need a new economic theory at the level of economic theory. We don't have it. It's coming. They're coming. It's coming. But you're going to have to spread ownership as a means of distributing income because the technology is going to displace labor in the productive process, as Lord Keynes predicted. So we're at a time of transition. It's coming. Thank you, Harold. Yeah, I just want to make a point about that. I mean, I agree with what you said and what you said, and basically a lot of these things. And, uh, you know, the only way you can really change people on a large scale is either through force or through example. So uh, the only way to do this and is to do all these things that they talk about over there on a large scale, on a global scale. You start doing them on a small scale. It doesn't need to be done, you know, by a million people at the same time. You can start with 10, and every idea, especially for humans, is like a virus. You know, it catches on really fast and spreads. So you can start with 10, but next year it'll be a million. It's very simple. Yep, um, and w when I say, though, everyone has to know about this, I, it, I don't mean to say that everyone, <laughs> it's a figure of speech, uh, it, like you said, the reason why we have all these different chapters and uh, pretty much chapters all over the world is because we need to get this started on, in our local communities. And uh, from there, it will catch on and, you know, eventually uh, enough people will know about it. Uh, and, and hopefully, there will, by then, we'll have examples. We'll have a, um, what, what they're trying to do now uh, is create, um, what would it be called, like a lab, instead of a city, they're doing the expo center? The, the, yeah, well, the yeah. Center. Like Florida an, is one. Has, well, has there's, the city been set up yet? No, no. I, no, I mean, that's that's the point. That's um, what we're trying to do. So, right now, I mean, yeah, we, we want to actually, well, the purpose of the Venus Project is hopefully we can get as many people aware of it, and there are 
actually communities forming right now, discussing in all over different parts of the world. Um, I mean, the U.S. is just very slow. I mean, look at look at our media. They 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 fill you with garbage. But a lot of the other countries, countries, yeah, they're meeting up. They're discussing. Which countries? Oh, I mean, all over the world. I mean, UK. Um, you have Turkey. a you have a huge uh, website presence in Israel, and I understand that you have a big chapter there. Yeah, there's there's chapters forming all over the globe right now, and they're talking about the relevant topics that we're, we're also discussing right now. And, I mean, hopefully we start off with communities forming and collaborating and, and, and building the stuff that will help sustain their life. I mean, if they can sustain their life and then produce more energy, they'll, maybe they'll share that with other communities and just share food, just start, you know, sharing and, and just caring for each other. And hopefully that'll start. I mean, I, I understand that money is, money is a tool. I mean, just like anything else, it can be used for good. It can use for bad. It can be used to buy war. It can be used for corruption. It can be used to buy whatever. It can be and, used to do, do good yeah. things too. I mean, right. What about, yeah. yep. what right. about the the so-called uh, global initiative that uh, Bill Clinton is? is doing. I mean, what do you think of that? Do you think that this, that's a, a solution or or, or, is it, or is this just putting a band-aid on, on that? See, I, I'm not sure what the global initiative well, he, that... He has got a, a, Bill Clinton has, is heading a project that uh, he's, he's helping uh, disadvantaged communities throughout the world and he's, uh, what he's doing is raising money in order to uh, take 20 care minutes. of them. So I'm just minutes left. Yeah. wondering, okay. is, that, is that going to help, or do we need... I, I would um, know, if I may interject, Barbara, I don't believe that we... I don't believe we can trust Bill Clinton because of what he had, Janet Reno, Oklahoma City, Waco, Ruby Ridge, these are the same things as 9-11, they shredded the Bill of Rights. Jimmy Carter was the only last standing real human rights president that had no foreign soldier intervention and had solar panels on the White House and had a progressive agenda towards making this a better world and embracing intelligent people. Uh, Clinton, like, like Obama, are Democrats, but they're two wings of the same party, Republican, Democrat, as long as we vote, woo we think think we're, we're, we're moving somewhere. But obviously, you know, Ron Paul, who was a billionaire, or, or you know, not Ron Paul, Ross Perot, or Ralph Nader, or all, Green Party, alternative, uh, independent, uh, grassroots, progressive thinking parties can't get over in this country. Like so you play the game, you know? Like and then Clinton is just part of a game player with the Bush agenda. Right. Yeah, the reason why Ron Paul never gets any attention, he, he's not funded by all these, the, the people that essentially control the money. You know? Yeah. yeah, he was. No <laughs> TV really appearances, no, you know, nothing. Ross Perot, Ralph Nader, Cynthia McKinney. They, they right. can't get over you, you. Forget about it. We live in a, a pseudo democracy. It doesn't really matter I mean, who's doing what right now. The point is that if we start doing something, and if people see that there's a community that's living better than their community, they're going to want to join it. It's common sense. Yep, uh, pretty much. Why do you think people come? I mean, I was not born in America. I was born in a different country, and my family came here because they thought America is a better place to live. And just like everybody else that lives in America today came here because it was a better place to live. So if they see a community that's better than where they live today, they're going to want to come to a community, or they're going to want to start a community like that where they live. So why don't we follow the example of Amsterdam or, or Barcelona, Spain, whatever, you know, that they, they have a lot more freedom and personal freedom and political progressive thinking, where you know, some just accountability with mass transits and everything. I mean, a lot of U Europe is really bubbling with advances that America needs to wake up to. <laughs> where's, the, where's the war on poverty? Where, where's the, why, why is there a war on drugs? It's, it's absurd. I mean, a lot of, just all war just needs to stop. I, mean, I can't imagine yeah. that, they, right. that they want health insurance rather than health care. I never heard that anybody say a health care system. They only talk about a health insurance system. And that is perpetuating that same thing about, with money. And we've got to take the, the money out of the health care system. 
we need a health care system. There's no reason why certain privileged people have the right to live. Yeah. And those people who don't have the who who uh, don't have those resources Putting don't have the right to live. You're, you, you know, I'm sorry, you can't you you can't have this treatment. You have to die. Yeah, of it's course. It's horrible. Learn yeah, from yeah. Cuba. Cuba <laughs> shows very good. <laughs> well, I don't know. I want to thank everybody, particularly Barbara, for putting this together and the Zeitgeist people. It is a major piece of work, it seems to me. It seems to me. And I thank everybody. For, and Chris came and screamed it for us. I thank him for that. And everybody, and Barbara. And so I think it's been a good one. night and a, and a lot going on. Good to be in touch with you people. I want to get your card and get your mind. And this has uh, got implications as far as communication because we're in ACAP. We're in the cable access producer group where the production of video and distribution can be done without money because it's met by payments from the cable industry. It's a major force for communication alternatively. And we wanted to talk about the possibility. We did some uh, alternative communication about the important issues. I think it would be good if we all went back and read a little bit more about the fuller lifestyle. But that's... Uh, We're selling we, want, we want to show the next movie at another time. Yes, we will. We'll be able to do that. I'm on Harold show also, now. Oh, yeah. We need a new an economic system. system. And we ought to think in terms of subsuming the old way, not overthrowing it. And that it's going to include everybody. And the real challenge is in the intellectual community, they're falling down on the job. We don't have provisions coming Thank at the you. level of theory, economic theory particularly, that's relevant to a, re a situation that's been qualitatively transformed in the evolution of consciousness. And we're coming into a new whole thing. We need a whole new thing. But it's one, again, back, if we've come to where we've got non-scarcity as an ontological reality, which we haven't had for 200,000 years, it's a new world that's there at the level of capability, not the real world. But we have a capability, and it's the intellectuals, not the politicians. It's the intellectuals falling down on offering an alternative that's so comprehensively appropriate to the evolution of universal consciousness that it will be liberating of the mass of the people who are not well served by the outdated institutions formulated within scarcity, and also the ecology. But will also, in the end, the major challenge is one that will be able to be understood by the Illuminati or whoever the bad guys are on their own terms, and they're involved in it as well, and that's what we've got to do, is have a real bipartisan, for want of a better term, thing that's going to be able to engage the, the oh, trilateralists and all the rest who are running things. And that's where we're falling down the job. We need a way to communicate an alternative way of operating Spaceship Earth, and that's what the communicating of that is about, with uh, public access is one place where that could be done. And yeah, I'd, 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 I'd also like to say that we need to uh, revolutionize ourselves. It's like we have conditioning. I have to learn that I can tighten my belt and go a week without eating food. I have to control my appetites. I'm, uh, every individual has to find their own revolution within and change their thinking and their activity to step up because we know that paradise can exist and we can live in a technological paradise in our heart. We can imagine a peaceful world where we're all one tribe and the native people know that. The indigenous people know that we, are, we share our resources. So, you know, the good versus the bad is, is coming to fruition, like it or not, like the hundredth monkey. We're all waking up. Yeah. But it's up to us individuals to step up and control our appetites, control our emotions, and become more evolved spiritually. And let's not forget that on the dark side of technological advancement, I don't know if somebody should do the modeling. I think the weapon systems that exist now and are hair trigger alert and so forth, particularly in the realm of germ and other kinds of things, uh, playing off this, the ignorance and the hatred and so forth, I believe they've become, on the negative side, now, for the first time, species lethal. I think if there's an unleashing of the weapon systems as we've done with alarming regularity throughout the human experience out of hatred and so forth, we could we now have the capability of destroying the species, the whole homo sapien species. I believe that's the case. It would be oh, we, we, now that signals a new existential so reality in the universe. I mean, on the uh, inverse side of that is well, we're not we have a new existential <laughs> significant reality at the level of capability that we have, in fact, after 200,000 years, transcended 
material scarcity as an ontological reality in which we will build our institutions by which we interrelate. We're not providing that for the intellectual community. It has to include the people responsible for the outdated institutions, not overthrown, but subsumed. Oh, yeah. And I really think Zeitgeist is a great movement in that direction. So you're, what you're saying is instead of being anti It's going to be the people that make the yeah. changes. public access. They're going to be looking at the justice system. It's called Behind the Bench. It's tomorrow, 5 o'clock, Cornelius, at, at 4 West 124th Street. 9 West 124th Street up in Harlem. They're going to be judges and, and people of legal concern about the justice system for the people. A major, it's called Behind the Bench. We've got some got flyers, flyers about that. And people might want to go to that. You want a flyer? Here you are. You can't have that without a frame. Yeah, more. Well,